Okay, so it's the end of September. It's 111 degrees today, later on this afternoon. It's going to be 113 tomorrow, September 27th. <laughs> That's the way it is in Arizona. <laughs> Just still hot. We dipped down into the 60s overnight for a week, and then it went back up close to 80. So anyways, I have a subscriber that was talking about the pool, and... I just wanted to let them know in the video that right now my pool is 90 degrees with just keeping that pool cover on over there. And I was telling him that I have an area that if I just want to clean it and put the pool cover back on, or I want to go for a swim real quick, I just pull it off to the side there and then pull it back on. It takes like three minutes to pull it off, like a minute or two to put it back on. I just get in the water, grab the uh, end of this, grab the end of the pool cover, and I just walk it over that way, and it's on, and I just get out of the pool and dry off. So, but um, he also was wondering about um, the, uh, this is the um, pool reel that I use, and has a handle on one end and you just have like a wheel on the other side here you just crank and this locks it down right here when you're you got it on there to me it's kind of a pain um when i'm gonna store it in the summer when i don't need it um i'll put it on there but one of the problems i have with this type is as you're reeling it on it will put a lot of pressure on the first part that's on there and it'll pop those bubbles. So if you have two people doing it, it's much better so that you kind of don't have the tension on it and you won't destroy the uh, uh, end of it. Like what I'm talking about is like right here, these, these bubbles towards this area of this end right here will end up getting pop because it'll squeeze it real hard when you're putting that back on the reel that water weighs a lot on that and it drags it across the water when you're reeling it up so a lot of times it's just easier for me just to pull it off like that and then pull it right back on so we just got the pool cleaned it's 90 degrees we're going to go in the cement pond after this video but we took the solar down back over here because we wanted to do our garden in the winter time. You can't grow anything out here in the uh, summer. We This we grew last year and it, it stayed oregano. And those pepper plants over there were from last year, but everything else died. So we added two more six inch boards to this raised garden. And we put like 16 cubic feet of miracle Grow soil on top so that when we go to um, take in uh, plant our seeds it uh, has that miracle soil and it'll work its way down and we'll also be using some fertilizers in that so we'll be putting plants in all these pots but I uh, just want to tell that one gentleman that uh, so that's how I handle the pool cover and if I put this pool cover back on, I don't need to really use a heater. And you can see that over half my pool is in the shade right now. And the sun actually sets over here. It used to come over this way, but it's already to the point where it's setting back in here. So I'm in uh, over half the pool is shaded all day long. So I can't get any heat that way. So I just get the little bit of heat that way off of that one area. So during the day, I'll run it at like 2,000, 2,400 RPMs to collect that heat and kind of cycle it through the pool. And then I knock the RPMs down to like 1,000 or 1,200 overnight. That keeps the chlorine moving through there. And as you can see, I have no algae in a year from, I run my pool pump at at least pretty close to 1,200 RPMs. Um, there's a lot of days it just runs 1200 RPMs for the whole 24 hour period. I don't know when I have the pool cover on this time in the year when the sun's kind of 
not on the pool anymore. I'll turn it up during the day to 20, 2000 to 2400 RPMs to kind of get that heat circulated through where it is heating it. But um, we, um, I was wanted to show them the uh, pool pump is a jacuzzi. This is probably like five or six years old. Um, made in Australia. <laughs> so, but um, it's a variable speed and it is actually a um, uh, auto sensing 115 volt, 230 volt. And it is, um, I have it wired as a plug right here. I, I just got this wire coming out of here and it's actually plugged in right there. So it, uh, oh, that's the other one. I actually have this going in over here. Um, let's see, we're at, oh, you can't see because of the light. We're at 2000 RPMs right now. We were at like 3,200 because I was cleaning the pool and then I just wanted to drag anything on the top into the um, uh, bin in there. So right here, right now, it says it's 99 outside, but you can see it's 90 degrees in my pool. So the, the water from the pool pump over there goes through the tube right here, goes into this big one goes through the big one, comes out of that big one, comes into the smaller one, and then comes out of here and goes back to the pool. So I don't need to have either one of these on in order for the pool to go through, but they're both hooked up to my solar right now. So if I turn this on, it's, um, you know, all I have to do is turn a button on right there and it's on. So it's on solar but I don't need to run it right now. I'm at 90 degrees on the pool. And you can see there's no algae. You gotta keep that pH up. Um, this one's on the pool pump too, but that's gonna use 6,500 watts. That's what I'm using running this air conditioner, this air conditioner, and these two mini splits all at the same time. And uh, so that thing uses a lot. That's a three and a half ton, four ton air conditioner. That's a 12.7 ton heat pump. These are all heat pumps here. Even that uh, heat pump, the, the pool heaters are heat pumps, air conditioners are heat pumps. So it's kind of nice we got that solar running our three and a half ton and four ton right now. And here's, this is a pergola that's 10 by eight. And I have, um, I had to put some extensions on here, but I have 16 panels on here. And this is like over 5,000 watts off of this array. I have eight in series, eight in series. I parallel those together and run them into one of those EG4 3000 off-grid inverters. And these are 330 watt mono panels. Those are all used mono panels over there. These are 330 watt use mono panels. I got eight of these in series, eight of those in series. I parallel both those together and they go into a, one of those EG4 3000 watt inverters. So I've got a quarter, quarter acre yard. So I've got a good size yard to be able to uh, do this stuff. And these are 10, 400 watt bifacial up to 500 watt on here. All 10 in series going into the third EG4 inverter. And then we have 24 250 watt poly panels, 12 in series, 12 in series, and then both of those in parallel going into the last fourth EG4 inverter. And then uh, these solar panels are six here, six on that shed. And then there's eight mono. These are all mono over here. Those are going into my um, grow watt, 12 kilowatt. And that runs my air conditioner in my garage. I can't wait to jump in that pool. <laughs> it's hot out already. It's over 100 degrees. So it feels nice and cool in here. And we have the thermostat 
oops, set at 73 and it's 76 right now. So, and there's that 12 kilowatt grow watt I showed, I told you. That's running this 18,000 BTU mini split. And then here's my four EG4 uh, 3000 watt inverters. This one's got those bifacials on top of that pergola. This one is the first one I showed you, the, the one that I had to do extensions on. Um, there's 16 solar panels. It's actually 4,640 4, watts I totaled it up. And then this is the north wall. These are all the poly pan. Uh, no, these are the 330 watt panels where they're eight in one array, eight on the other, and we parallel them together. So that's 5120 watts of mono. And then this one is that six kilowatt, 24 poly panels on the west wall. And um, right now you can see with both of those air conditioners running, we are at 100% on our um, batteries. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight batteries that are all in parallel for these over here. And then we just have that last lone one over here running the uh, air conditioner in here. And it's 1.98 that we have coming in and 1.9 uh, is what the load is so but this is fully charged so it doesn't need to go very much over that so it's uh it's keeping my batteries charged and we're just barely bringing in because the batteries are charged we're just barely bringing in a little over a kilowatt on all of these and this one over here is one point yeah just a little over a kilowatt now when I'm charging my batteries and I have a load on there, I'll be bringing in um, right around 11,000 watts at the end of September. I can bring in to charge my batteries and run my load at um, like 9 o'clock in the morning. And then I can run that till about 4, 4.30, maybe 5 o'clock, keep that load of that many watts coming in. So, but that's what I'm using to run everything my uh everything goes from these four into this electrical panel and their regular um their regular um breakers um we got a 50 amp breaker for that big pool heater and then we got the um 30 amp breaker for the three and a half ton air conditioner and a 30 amp for that four ton so this brings out the what comes out of this is pure sine wave AC 60 Hertz comes out of this and I can go right into a electrical panel, but I have to run all my wire. You can see all these coming out of these. Everything that I want to run on the other side of that house, I have to run a wire from this electrical panel all the way over to that air conditioner or that pool heater um, anywhere that I want to run it. So like um, here, I had to run it on this wall, up over here, come over here, run my TV. I run, um, this is a um, dishwasher out here, kind of got like a um, kitchen out here. Um, this is a heat pump dryer, and this is an Electrolux washing machine. So we also run seven cubic foot, um, five cubic foots over there, 11 cubic foot and a regular refrigerator. We run all that stuff overnight um, on that battery bank right there. So we're right around 60, 70% left over at six o'clock in the morning when we wake up. But it's nice and cool in here right now. It's, uh, so it says it's 85 degrees, but I didn't start this up until about 10 o'clock, 10, 10, 30. I'm running late today, so. But hope that answers your question for these subscriber that uh, asked about the pool. And now we'll be able to keep this heated, like I said, for another two to four weeks without using a pool heater. And then I'll use, 
at that point I really don't need to use a lot of the air conditioning so I'll use this small one right here probably oops I'm sorry right here probably this is 17,000 it's a fibro pool FH 120 120 volt I will use this till probably the end of December and then in January and February I'll have to run this and then in March I can probably go back down to this and then I can run my pool keep my pool heated uh, probably 82 to 90 degrees all year long and those are both pool chillers too so if the temperature in the pool gets too high I can switch it over and I can actually um, drop the temperature lower than what the water is and it'll make cold water come out instead of heated water so it's pretty nice and that big pool heater, I bought that like six, seven years ago. That was like, um, God, I think that was like $3,800, bucks, 4000 dollars That little one was like 1100 bucks, 1000 or 1100 bucks. It was a refurbished. I've had no problems with it. I, when it came, I had to wire the plug onto it. So I just wired a regular 12-gauge um, extension cord plug on that thing, and I've had no problems with it. So... Anyways, really easy to uh, do this. Now, that big pool heater, that uses like 6,500 watts while it's running. So if I wanted to, if, as long as I keep my pool cover on here, most of the nights it'll be anywhere from 2 to 5 degrees with the pool cover on there that I'll drop. And if I were to run that pool heater on solar for about mm, three hours i would recoup that um as long as the daytime temperature is like below 70 degrees and there's no sun on the pool i could get that back in like three hours um but if you wanted to run that on grid and didn't want to do the solar you would probably spend um you know it's right in the winter time for me it's around nine cents and say it's 7,000 watts, 9 cents times 7 is $6, 63 cents a day to heat my pool with that big pool heater. So if I didn't want to go solar, I could do that. So, you know, 63 cents times 30 days, um, that's like under 200 bucks um, to keep your pool heated in the wintertime. It's probably going to go up to about 300 bucks in January and February. But still, if your rates are around eight and a half, nine cents, nine and a half cents, that's not too bad to keep a heated pool if you live out here in Arizona or the Southwest. Um, pretty nice. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't cost me anything to keep my pool heated. So, <laughs> so we can go in the, we call it the cement pond um, any time of the year now. So... Hey, I hope this information helps. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, and hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely blessed day. And let me know if you have any questions.